Well, first of all, really congratulations. We just watched it like 10 minutes, but it was mm -hmm. enough. Good, good, thank you. Some are born to feast. Others spend their lives in the dark. <laughs> begging for scraps. Uh, the Jungle Book was one of the most successful films for Disney. Uh -huh. So, in terms of critical and box office, so did you feel pressure to achieve something? Yeah. Lion King. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, there's pressure, um, not from Jungle Book, but there's pressure from the old version of the movie that's really still uh people still love today so and it also did incredibly well and you know won awards and and 25 years later it still uh casts a big shadow so we wanted to make sure we we're doing something special that honored the original but also surprised people and did some something new with it <laughs> a lot of change in the characters and uh, the plot of the original movie. Uh, could you tell us about the process behind that decisions? Well, we knew we had to stay very true to the basic story of the whole thing, that people didn't want to see me reinvent it completely. Uh, so, you know, I, re I remember seeing when I started off, I, I went to Broadway in New York and I saw the stage musical. And what was interesting to me is the stage musical was very different from the movie, but it still felt like I saw every scene that I remembered from the movie. And so that was, that gave me a clue how to approach this, that, that there are certain story points and characters and scenes and songs that the audience remembers and expects to see. But outside of that, you have a lot of freedom to make it your own and reinterpret some of the humor, the dialogue, add some scenes, as long as it feels like it still stays true to the, what they remember about the old one. And so that was the trick. The trick was, was understanding how people remember the original because they don't always remember it exactly how it was, and that's something interesting to, to, to uh, look into. Yeah, Elton John was a part essential of the original soundtrack, uh -huh. and now he has an original song called Never Too Late. Yes. Uh, could you tell us uh, the work behind the song? Well, so, so t Tim Rice and Elton John collaborated, and, and uh, also with Lebo M, who has, uh, is the original voice from the beginning of Circle of Life, and he's been part of uh, recruiting and training uh, the choirs from South Africa to be a part of the stage productions. And so they all collaborated on this song for, that's in, it's part of, it's not part of the body of the film, it's in the end credits, but it's a new song coming from, and when you hear Elton John's voice sing, it reminds you of, uh, you know, he sang, I think it was Can You Feel the Love Tonight in the end credits of the original. So we wanted to, to pay homage to um, the traditions of the, of the old film. And, to, and also Elton John is someone I grew up you know, uh, listening to his music as a, as a kid. I grew up in the 70s and the 80s, and he was all over the radio. And to be able to actually have him write an original piece with Tim uh, was really special. Yeah. Uh, yesterday you mentioned in the press conference yes. that you maintain the main um, message of the original movie, but there is more measures like environment yes. or... That's sure. Yeah, I think that that's all, I think it's all implied and captured. I think, I think the message is the same, and I think that each generation looks at it and relates to something different about it. You know, that's what's good about having a story that feels so timeless like this, is uh, you could look at it, and it does relate to, you know, the challenges of each, of each generation. And certainly the environment is one of those challenges where, you know, uh, like Mufasa says, you have a responsibility not just to, to yourself, but also to everyone else in the circle of life and also the generations that, that follow you. This is a movie about how the circle of life keeps going and that each new generation, you know, you know, it, times pass. He says the, the sun rises and falls on, 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 you know, him being the king. And, and then it's his turn, Simba's turn to be king. And we have to make sure that for each generation, we leave them what we have and we don't end up ruining the world. You know, it, certainly environmentally is, is, a, is a challenge that we face in this generation. Uh, finally, uh, you mentioned before that you were inspired in some documentaries. Could you tell us about that? 
So we looked at, um, in order to achieve something that felt like photorealism and also to get expression and emotion out of the animals, we looked at documentaries because, um, especially like Planet Earth, Planet Earth 2, I think came out while we were working on this. And it's interesting because Hans Zimmer does the music for that too. So I got to ask him a lot of questions about the BBC documentaries. And I was so curious as to why I felt so much emotion watching them, even though the animals didn't have any human expression and it was all very natural. And, and then we studied how they edited it, how they scored it, um, the type of lenses and cameras they used, the types of shots, film speed, little things that when you follow that, uh, that template, you can achieve the same type of emotion that the other movie the older film achieved with facial expressions on animated cartoon characters. So we had to find another language to tell that emotional story. And studying doc really good nature documentaries was one of the, one of the helpful keys. Oh, we move it, 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 o